I have seen the legislators on their way, the jacketless men in midwinter, who will cast their votes like stones for this war. Men who have to cross the street through slush and over gutter, their cuffs now vaguely blued with a salt that dries in dots where it splashes and mingles with the finely woven cloth of the chalk-striped suits, the soi-disant practical men. You can see them now, tiptoeing, now leaping, balletic, Windsor knotted, fragrant, and shaved, they pass. They pass the window of the capital deli where, wherein I am writing to my friend in Baghdad, he, a witness for peace, a poet who for years has wondered what good poetry is or has been or does. I compose today's answer from here, saying, I think of poetry as a salt dug from a foreign mine that arrives like a miracle in Boston as pellets to break underfoot and melt the dangerous plated ice and cling to the acknowledged lawmakers to stay with them in their dreams, to eat at the cloth and reach down to the skin and, be and beyond the calf into the shin. I think of the soul as equivalent to bone and that conscience must hide in the marrow, float in the rich fluids and wander the honeycomb at the center there and not in the brain or even the heart is where the words attach, where they land and settle. Take root after the long passage through the body's byways. Just think, I write, of how some poetry rolls off the tongue, then try to see the tongue in the case that faces me, a curious, thick extension of cow flesh, fresh from a butcher's block, grainy and flush, I think that if my tongue alone could talk, it would swear in any court that poetry tastes like the iodine in blood or the copper in spit and makes a salt stronger than tears.